to the next phase of trials. Now, there are usually three phases, okay? The process can take years. Critics worry that the FDA is rushing. Dr. Mark McClellan is a former FDA commissioner. It's good to have you. Good to be with you, Chris. What's your take on them giving a boost to this vaccine? I think it's another important step forward in the development of vaccines. Chris, as you said before, this is a new kind of vaccine. We haven't seen it used in people before. So there are still some important steps in testing ahead that will take time. This round of tests is about figuring out the right dose and if there are any major side effects as well. After that, it's going to have to go into larger scale testing. But this is going to be done in a matter of a few months, and that's a really unprecedented time frame. So Tony Fauci says, look, we're not going to rush the phases of the testing. We're going to rush the manufacturing, and we're not going to wait until the phases are done. We're going to take a gamble here uh, that this works. And I said, well, how can you take the gamble? You don't know anything about this virus. You know what I mean? You, every time I tell you something about my symptoms, you go, gee, we haven't heard that. And he said, vaccine is very different science than understanding symptoms and treatment. Is that true? And what it does is, that mean? Yes. Well, in, when he talks about taking a gamble, we're not taking a gamble on safety. We're taking a gamble on manufacturing a whole lot of this vaccine and probably other vaccines before we know for sure whether they are safe and effective. Because we need lots of vaccines, Chris. This is a treatment that we give to healthy people to prevent the virus from spreading in the community, to prevent people from getting sick in the first place. Normally, that manufacturing of millions or billions of doses to protect people around the world would take a really long time. So we're doing it the same time as the testing is going on. If the testing doesn't pan out, we have to throw away the vaccine. You know, one of the weird things here about how we got to this point is that when the Chinese put out the, what do you guys call it, the sequence for the virus or whatever back in January, yes. Fauci put it right into vaccine mode. So I guess they've been working on this over 60 days. It's interesting that while it seemed to some of us that we kind of were asleep on this, you know, and that they were taking it too lightly, the first chance that Fauci had with the vaccine part, he, you know, he went into full mode of trying to create a vaccine. Interesting kind of mixed message uh, there. And so now we look at the company involved. They've never done this before. Does that matter? It means that people are going to be extra careful to make sure that the vaccine is safe, it doesn't have side effects, and we're not yet sure, because it's a new kind of vaccine, just how much of an immune response, how much antibodies to the virus it will actually generate. And that's why there are going to be a couple more phases of testing. It's going to take some months. The advantage of this kind of vaccine, though, Chris, is that because it's based on the sequence of the virus, it is able to be manufactured very quickly. Basically, you're injecting uh, a uh, mRNA, which tells your own body, the human body, to produce a piece of the virus, and then you become immune based on your reaction to, to the virus, it's to the piece of the virus in your own body. So it's a much faster approach than the traditional vaccines that are based on inject growing and then injecting a, a harmless virus that carries a piece of uh, COVID-19. That takes longer. That's why this isn't human testing first, but we're going to have to be extra careful about the safety and the effectiveness. So I paid to get antibody testing uh, done um, because I was totally leveled by this virus and it like freaked me out on a psychological level where I needed to know. I didn't believe I had the antibodies. I thought this thing had beaten me and it was going to come back. I had all these crazy ideas in my head like it was a horror movie. So I know that not only do I have the long-term antibody, which is one you guys look for, IgG, right. but I still have some IgM. It's going down, but that's proof that this thing beat me up pretty good and for a long time. That's right. And that my body had to make short-term you know, antibodies not too long ago. Um, but antibody testing has not rolled out the way that we thought. Uh, is there blame in that? And is it rest at the FDA? Well, FDA gets criticized on both sides. It got criticized uh, over the last couple of months for letting on a lot of the new antibody tests. And Chris, it sounds like you got an accurate one. And because of your symptoms, because of what you went through, I'm pretty sure you are immune, at least for now. But many of the tests on the market, especially for people who weren't symptomatic, have not given very accurate results. Now, FDA took steps over this past week to tighten that up. 
uh, backed by some new research and some new testing that's being done with support from the NIH. So that the goal is to get more confidence in the right. antibody tests that are on the market. We're not there yet, though, and I think people need to be careful about the antibody tests out there and the claims that they're making. Yeah, a lot of people are picking them up offline. They're really quick. You can do them at home, yeah. um, and that's a problem. Same thing with COVID positive negative tests. Now, you've been talking to the governor of Texas, Abbott. He got a lot of traction off saying, Burks likes my plan, uh, and we're going to have more testing and more of that. But he doesn't have it in place yet, and yet he is reopening, and it seems so obviously cart before the horse. What is your take as someone who knows the plan well and the governor? Well, Chris, uh, I've written several reports about the, what we think is the best way to open back up, and our work at Duke really strongly suggests that we need to get the testing in place first. So ideally, the increased testing capacity that Texas is trying to build right now would be there to wrap around this gradual reopening so that we can more quickly detect any outbreaks. So I, I do hope Texas continues to go slow, and I really hope they can ramp up the testing capacity quickly. They're working hard on that right now, as are many states. Mark McClellan, thank you very much. Appreciate having you on the show. Have a good